The U.S. has as much moral authority as Saudi Arabia on the legitimacy of elections. Let there be no mistake, Sunday's regional and municipal elections in Venezuela are nothing more than a sham, reads a recent statement authored by Republican U.S. Senators Jim Risch and Michael McCall. The illegitimate Maduro regime has taken drastic measures to dismantle or control every independent institution in the country, including hijacking political parties and the National Electoral Council to ensure state-sponsored electoral fraud. Today's elections in Venezuela are as illegitimate as Maduro's tyrannical regime, reads a tweet by Republican Senator Rick Scott. The Venezuelan people deserve free and democratic elections now. The U.S. and all freedom-loving nations must stand up, condemn these sham elections, and support the people in their fight for freedom. The imperial media are lining up behind the official U.S. government line on Venezuela's gubernatorial and mayoral elections, with the New York Times assuring us that conditions are far from freely democratic, and the Washington Post reporting that opposition parties say the elections have been stacked against them by the socialist government of President Nicolas Maduro, who sees the elections as, quote, a chance to reassert strength while projecting a veneer of legitimacy, end quote. This level of intrusiveness into Venezuela's heavily internationally monitored democratic process is typical of what we've been seeing from the U.S. political media class with regard to electoral contests in empire-targeted Latin American nations like Bolivia and Nicaragua. Which is really silly, because the U.S. has no more authority over the legitimacy of democratic processes than a totalitarian monarchy like Saudi Arabia. U.S. elections are, of course, corrupt and fraudulent, entirely dominated at the federal level by legalized oligarchic bribery in the form of campaign contributions, manipulated primaries, gerrymandering, voter suppression, shutting out third parties, and the worst voting system in the Western world. More than this, though, the United States is also the world's single most egregious offender when it comes to interfering in foreign elections. As Claire Burnish has observed in the Free Thought Project, the U.S. government's own data shows that it has interfered in no fewer than 81 foreign elections just between the years 1946 and 2000. You'd never know it from the shrieking of the political media class post-2016, but this would also include brazenly interfering in Russia's elections in the 90s to ensure the presidency of Washington lackey Boris Yeltsin. And that's just election interferences. It doesn't include more brazen interferences in who governs foreign nations like direct military interventions, staged coups, color revolutions, and proxy wars. As a completely undemocratic country whose government is far and away the world's single most aggressive saboteur of democracy, it is fair to say that the U.S. institutions are the absolute least qualified to comment on the validity of any nation's elections on the entire planet. Everyone would laugh if Saudi Arabia's psychopathic crown prince Mohammed bin Salman began opining on the quality of various nations' democratic processes, especially if these criticisms were directed at the so-called liberal democracies of the West. But this same scrutiny of a power structure who has no business commenting on electoral integrity never gets directed at the United States whose institutions issue such criticisms on a daily basis despite being no more morally qualified to do so than the House of Saud. If you think about it, Saudi Arabia is nothing other than a more honest version of the United States. Its oligarchs and its official government are the same people. It doesn't pretend that its warmongering is humanitarian. When it wants to kill a journalist, it just dismembers him with a bone saw rather than trying to squeeze him to death with lawfare in a maximum security prison and it makes no pretense about being a democracy. The more I observe its behavior on the world stage, the more hilarious it gets to see U.S. political and media figures criticizing the democratic processes of foreign nations. It's like McDonald's evaluating whether mom-and-pop restaurants are sufficiently eco-friendly and vegan. Very silly stuff, mate.